Hey guys, how's it going? Welcome to another GM4 video. Today I'm going to be showing off a project that I've been working on called G4 Brems. G4 Brems is a GM4 application that models Bremstrahlung. So what is Bremstrahlung? Well, Bremstrahlung is a German word that means breaking radiation. And what it is in physics is it's radiation that's emitted from electrons that break very fast or change direction really fast. So very simply, what Bremstrahlung looks like is you have a material in the middle. So you'd accelerate an electron really, really fast towards this material. And as it approaches the material, it goes through the particles. And because of electromagnetic interactions, it's gonna break or change direction. So these particles are like pulling on the electron and it's just gonna like either change direction or it could stop completely right here. Or sometimes it doesn't break at all. It just goes right through. But as this electron breaks, it's gonna lose a lot of energy. And to compensate for that loss of energy, a photon is created. So right here where the electron breaks, a photon is created. And this photon is what's called Bremstrahlung. It's radiation that is produced by this electron breaking really fast. So one application of using Bremstrahlung is in a medical linear accelerator. So in a medical linear accelerator, what they do is they create Bremstrahlung and they create this beam of a bunch of photons and this beam is what they use to treat cancer patients to irradiate the cancer cells and kill those cancer cells using this Bremstrahlung radiation that's produced. And a lot of times in these medical linear accelerators, they use tungsten to create that Bremstrahlung because tungsten can withstand a lot of heat before it starts melting. So what they'll do is they'll shoot electrons at the tungsten and tungsten can withstand all that heat but the tungsten will create this photon beam out the other side. All right, guys, so now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna demonstrate the Jamf4 application. And then once I'm done, if you wanna stick around, I'll kind of go through the code and explain how I made it happen. All right, everybody, so here's the G4 Brems application. I click on it, awesome. So right here, you'll see kind of the detector. So first, this little circle right here is the tungsten target. And then this donut looking shape right here is like a collimator so that the, the beam, cause when you'll see when I shoot the electrons at the tungsten target, like radiation goes everywhere. Like you got electrons flying around photons and everything. So I created this collimator to kind of focus the beam more. And then here, this square thing is a detector and eventually in the future, what this is gonna do is gonna pick up all the photons and record the data of how much energy each one has and where they're located and stuff like that. All right, guys, so to create a beam of electrons, let's go down here and you just have to type the command run, beam on, and then how many particles you wanna do, how many electrons. So I'm gonna just say 100 and we'll see how this looks. Awesome, so as you can see, it's pretty quick, but Here's kind of what the interactions look like. So it's a little bit color coded to help us see what's going on, but the red is the electrons. And then the green is the photons that are generated. So all these reds are hitting this target right here. And then out the other side, you can see there's more green. There's some reds as well, but more green. And then this collimator kind of focuses them in. So we have kind of a nice beam. It's not the best, but for now it'll do the job. All right, guys, so now that you've seen the demonstration, let's do a quick walkthrough of the code. So here's the project over here. So we have our g4brems.cc. That's the main function where everything gets started. And then as you can see in the SRC and include directories, we have about four classes that we implemented. So we'll just start here with g4brems. So here we have the main function. Uh, so to get started, we define a UI. That's, you know, the GM4 user interface that you saw. Um, you can run this application without a UI. You can run it from the command line and it will go even faster. So that's why I have this, like, you don't have to necessarily have a UI, but you can if you want. Next, we have to initialize the required classes for GM4. 
So the required classes are run manager, and then there's three additions you have to put in. Primary generator action, physics list, and detector construction. So first of all, we're just creating the default run manager using Jant4 run manager factory. And then you need to register the initialization classes with the run manager. So we have detector construction, which is what defines all the volumes like the target, the call meter, and the detector. All of that is in detector construction. Then we have the physics list, which is basically kind of instructions telling the application what we're using. We're using um, electromagnetic processes and Bremsstrahlung and stuff like that. And then finally, we have the action and initialization. And this is where primary generator action is, is implemented, but I'll show you guys this in a second. All right, after that, we're going to initialize any other classes that are optional. So I created a visualization manager right here. That way we can get the visualization, and see the process happen and everything. And then down here, I have a scoring manager. So scoring has to do with registering those particles as they hit the detector. So in this release, it is not implemented yet. But in the future, I want that detector to pick up all those photons and display us a nice graph or some nice data, stuff like that. So now that we've initialized all this stuff, we can start the application right here. So really the only thing you technically need here is this UI session start. This is gonna start the UI popping up, but I have some extra things here. I have a block that happens if there's no UI. So if you chose to run your Jamf4 application from the command line and you want it to run really fast, but you don't wanna see the interaction happen, this can happen and basically, Whatever argument you passed into the command line, it's just going to run that instead of running the UI. But if you do want a UI and you do want visualization, uh, the code automatically applies this command, which executes this viz.mac file. And what that does is it creates that viewer that you saw where the, the detectors were. And it also color codes like the particles. So you can see the red ones are electrons, the green ones are photons. And it just configures all that visualization for us. So that's really nice. So let's go over these three initialization classes that we sent to the run manager. First, the detector construction. Then we'll do the physics list. And then we'll talk about action initialization, which is where the primary generator action is initialized. All right, so first we're going to go over to the detector construction. So this is extended from the Jant4 user con uh, detector construction. Basically, the one thing that we need to overwrite here is the construct method. So that was the header file. Let's go over to the source file. And in this, like I said, in this class, we're just um, creating all the detectors, the tungsten target, the collimator, and the detector. So this is our construct method that we're overriding. This method is just gonna create all these things in the world. So first things first, we need to get our NIST material manager. Jant4 has a really nice tool where it has a database of all the NIST approved materials. So that's how I got my target to be made of tungsten. And you can pretty much trust that it's gonna be accurate to how tungsten really is because NIST is like a really, trustworthy organization. So the first thing we have to do with our detector construction is create a world where all of our detectors are going to be inside of. So first we define the world size. I want it to be one meter cubed all around. Um, we made the material air. Now for the future, I want to figure out how to do a vacuum with this because in a real medical linear accelerator, they would do this in vacuum. But I'm not sure how to do that yet because in the NIST material manager, they don't have a vacuum. So I got to kind of go into that and figure out how to simulate a vacuum here. But basically, this is kind of the same with making a lot of the detectors, but you kind of have to do it three times. You have to create a solid version, a logic version, and then you have to create a PV placement, which places it into the, into the scene. So the solid world is made from a G4 box. Then the logic world is made from a logical volume. And the physical world, like I said, it's just like a placement 
type of class. All right, guys, so now that we've defined the world, this is the little block where we create our tungsten target. So we define tungsten as the NIST material G4W, which is the code for tungsten. Then we created some parameters like the inner radius, outer radius, and the thickness. All right, now we create our solid target using the G4 tubs class. And G4 tubs is just kind of like a cylinder. Then we create again our logic target, which is G4 logical volume. And then finally, we create a position and a rotation. Basically, the position's at zero, zero, the rotation is zero as well. But we need these to um, for our G, G4 PV placement. All right, and then finally, we create a collimator, which is also just made out of tungsten. I tried to keep it as realistic as possible. And as I was doing some research, I found out that they do use tungsten for the collimators as well. Just because, like I said, they have such a high melting point, so they can withstand all this like heat that's generated in this process. So same deal here, just created a solid version, logic, and a placement class. And then finally, we have our detector, kind of same deal. It's just this time it's a box instead of a cylinder. So finally, at the end of your detector construction, you always have to return the physical world that you defined up at the top. Yeah, so you got to return this placement class of the physical world. All right, guys, so now let's move on to our physics list. So a lot of times in GMT4 applications, you'll see they use a pre-made physics list. Just because I wanted to understand exactly what was going on in my program, I decided to create my own. And so I'm extending the G4V modular physics list class and making my own class called physics list. And then the methods that you need to override with this base class are construct particle and construct process. So let's go into our physics list source file. So here's my constructor. So I've messed around with this quite a bit, but I found that this actually works, even though it's really simple. All I did was I did this function called register physics and passed in the G4 EM standard physics. So this is just all the physics processes in a standard electromagnetic physics problem. So after registering this EM standard physics here, um, I originally had Bremsterlung hard coded in on this construct process code. And then I was thinking, what would happen if I just deleted that? I deleted it and it still worked exactly the same. So it turns out that Bremsterlung is included in this G4EM standard physics. All right, guys, let's continue with our primary generator action class. So here's our primary generator action class. And it's extended from the user, the G4V user primary generator action. So the single method you're supposed to override with this base class is called generate primaries. And then also very common is to have a particle gun class here. So I decided to include it in my project as well. So now onto the .cc file. All right, so basically we're gonna set up a particle gun that shoots electrons. So we're gonna start out with the number of particles per event. We start a new particle gun that shoots one particle at a time. To get the particle registered correctly, first you need to create some properties like particle name. This is actually really important that you get it correct because GMT4 has specific names for all the particles. The name for electron is just this E minus. So I had to look that up. And then I define the energy to be six MeV. In the future, I wanna be able to adjust this energy at runtime. So that way you can get different types of beams, but for now it's just hard coded as six MeV. And then down here we have to define our particles. So first we're gonna get the GMT4 particle table right here. Then we create a particle definition by finding this particle E minus in this particle table. And then we're gonna pass all these things into the particle gun, like the particle itself, which was from the particle table. Um, the energy, 6 MeV, the position, which is where it starts, which is negative 5 centimeters, and then the direction, which is towards the Z. And then it's really nice because in the generate primaries function, all you have to do is call the generate primary vertex method from the particle gun class. All right, guys, so that's the end of primary generator action. Um, to end off here, let's look at action initialization. 
So you need action initialization to correctly initialize the primary generator action into Jant4 because Jant4 has its own way of initializing everything. It gets really complicated. So you just need to use this class to initialize stuff. So in action initialization, it comes from the G4V user action initialization. And the only thing you technically have to overwrite here is the build method. So let's go over to the .cc file and I'll show you guys how I did that. So super short, super sweet, but all you have to do is use this set user action method and you register the primary generator action in there. So just by doing that at the beginning of the application, when it starts up, it's going to register that primary generator action in there. So that way, when I start the simulation, it's going to generate those particles in the way that Jamf4 intends to do it. So there you have it, guys. There's the first release of G4 Brems, first pre-release, I should say. And I have a lot of plans going forward with this application. I want to register each particle as it hits that detector, how much energy they had, and what position they had. So that way, it can really characterize that beam of photons that's created. Now, if you want to download this and use it yourself, um, I have kind of an issue right now with the binaries. I am yet to figure out how to set up the binaries so that they can run on any computer. So right now they work on my computer because I have GNT4 set up, I have Qt set up. Um, so if you do want to use this on your own computer, I suggest you check out one of my videos, like how to set up GNT4, how to set up GNT4 with Qt as well. And then you can download this source code and use CMake to build it yourself. But in the future, I want to use Docker to hopefully get my whole application into an environment where it can run on any computer. Doesn't matter if it's Windows, Mac OS, Linux, whatever. And right now I'm kind of struggling figuring out how to get GNT4 working on Docker because it can get pretty complicated. But if any of you guys have suggestions, of resources I can use to learn how to do Jant4 with Docker, I would really appreciate it. So yeah, if you just leave that in the comments below, that'd be super appreciated. So yeah, guys, thanks for watching. Hopefully you enjoyed this video. Hopefully it helped you on your own Jant4 projects that you're working on. If you would consider supporting me in my videos, I'd appreciate if you click one of those links in the description to support me. I always appreciate you guys watching my videos. Happy Jant4 coding. And I'll see you guys later.